Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Locked on Bulls. I'm Hayes. That's Pat the Designer. On today's episode, we'll be talking about a surprising update or lack thereof when it comes to Alonzo Ball's knee. We'll also be talking about Io and his season and what that meant for the Chicago Bulls. We'll do all that and more on today's Locked on Bulls. You are Locked on Bulls, your daily podcast on the Chicago Bulls, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Check out prizepicks.com and use the promo code NBA. Go to your app store and download the app today. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. Pat, got to talk about it, man. Lonzo Ball's knee. Apparently, there has been no progress made. He is still suffering discomfort anytime they try to ramp him up. He is now 16 weeks into what should have been and what was originally listed in an 18 week recovery process. How concerning is this for you for the long-term health of Lonzo Ball? Uh, it's concerning that we heard the report today that the front office is concerned about it, right? Like, I mean, injury issues are injury issues. They pop up. They happen all the time. It is what it is. So you can't really control them, right? I think that the two most concerning things to me, one is that David Kaplan, who reported it, shout out to Cap and Jay Hood over on ESPN. Shout out to Hoodie too, man, my guy. Um, mm. it, it, Cap's was one of the first people to say Jim Boylan would be fired during the season. Uh, I believe he was the first person. He he was um, the first person to say the Bulls front office was making a change. He was the first person to report on um, Michael Reinsdorf's conversations at uh, uh, um, All Star the All-Star game in 2020, right? Like, Cap says some crazy off the wall stuff sometimes, but his sources mm. are good. He's been a part of the NBA. So if he's saying that he's hearing this from the front office, from his sources, it probably means there's some level of truth to it, probably a good amount of level of truth to it. And I mean, listen, I, I feel like the news we got today from Cap where he says that the front office is concerned didn't really say anything to us that we didn't already know, right? Like we mm. didn't really get an update on Lonzo Ball. It was just that they're concerned because – Hey, this guy had, remember, the surgery he had was the short surgery. It yeah. was the surgery that was supposed to bring him back within six to eight weeks. We're getting to the point right now where if the Bulls had made the Eastern Conference Finals, Lonzo Ball still would not be able to ramp his body up to play right now. Those are concerning things heading into what now feels like, right? Like, it felt like, okay, this is going to be an offseason issue. This is going to be something we'll deal with in the offseason. Now it feels like this might linger in the next season. That's where it starts to become a little bit concerning. If if so, if we go through a whole off season and Lonzo Ball is still f feeling some pain and discomfort, it's time to really, really be worried about Lonzo Ball, right? Because yeah. we still we have quite a bit of time. The season doesn't start to October. If yeah. we get to that point, if we get five months from now and Lonzo still d feeling some discomfort, listen. Yeah. Things are going to – things need to start really, really getting concerning around about Lonzo Ball. Now, here's the question I want to present back to you, Pat. Because of this – now, and, and not saying not, – I'm not – I'm in the mindset right now that Lonzo will still be ready to go by training camp. That's just the thing that I choose to have. There's so much time to training camp. Yeah. I'm choosing to believe that. But because of this, because of the, the recovery time that it takes Lonzo Ball to, re to recover, because of the time that – um. The, the, the amount of injuries that Lonzo has had in his, in his career. Yes, we have Ayo DeSumo here. We're going to talk about in the next se segment very heavily. But do the Bulls possibly look at bringing in another guard for insurance, whether it be through the draft or free agency in this, in this offseason? I think you'd have to. I think you'd have to, and I think it would really signal that you feel that there's some serious concerns with Lonzo, right? Because mm -hmm. all we've had is guards. We've <laughs> it's, it's been the, the theme of this Bulls team, right? Like we did yeah. the the end of bench players yesterday. We named like five guards, like mm -hmm. <laughs> and and I think you would have to. I think you'd be looking at somebody like a Dennis Schroeder, possibly, uh, seeing if you could get him in here. Um, somebody who, hey, listen. <laughs> 
we don't know if you're the long-term answer, but at a minimum, right, we want to get you in here. And Schroeder, somebody who worked with Billy Donovan, who worked well with Billy Donovan, his career numbers are under Billy Donovan uh, over in OKC, his best numbers in his career. So, like, I, I feel like he's somebody who you could bring in, but Schroeder's not going to come at a cheap price tag, right? Like, it's mm-hmm. not like you're you're going to get these guys in here for a little or nothing. So it would really signal a, a serious issue with Lonzo if you bring somebody in of that caliber. But I think you have to because I I, I said on the show, on the, uh, the Daily Show for the Breeze today, look at the difference a point guard makes. Look at the difference in Zach Levine's numbers and DeMar DeRozan's numbers. Now, DeMar kept getting better, right, because he had to take on the load. But in Zach Levine's numbers, when Lonzo was on the floor, mm-hmm. Look at the difference that a point guard made last night when the Phoenix Suns get eliminated in the last five games of this series, how Devin Booker played when his point guard all of a sudden couldn't go as much. And all of a sudden we're looking and we're like, what's wrong with these two guys? Well, Chris Paul can't go. Like the point guard position is so important to everything that that is setting in motion, right? Like we've gotten in the age where such bigger guys are playing point guard that we're kind of like, oh, the point guard doesn't exist. Bron's a point guard. Luca's a point guard. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it really is such an important position, and it's one the Bulls will have to address if Lonzo can't go. This is true. Yeah. Well, and, and you know, I don't want to get into names. When we get to our free agents thing, now we'll incorporate, at least I will, I'll incorporate rate that in. But I do want to talk a little bit about a burn bruise. And I did some some looking up. This is this this is going to be concerning, but I have to I just feel like ask somebody who who reports on this we have to be honest with this and i want to give as much information as we can now it seems like lonzo is healed from his surgery it's the bone bruise that's causing the issue the and the main reason why this is such an issue the main especially in this ramping up to where they have to completely shut him down is that if he plays on a bone bruise it can cause his knee to completely blow out at that point it's career we're talking about possibly career ending type injury at that point yeah. now again usually a bone bruise heals on itself um and that's usually the case but that's why the whole ramp up and they ramp them back down uh they and it completely restarts it is because if you try to do too much with a bone bruise on your knee it can cause crazy damage yeah so and- and I believe, right, like the surgery he had was almost it, it's essentially the removal of his meniscus, right? Well, he had the, he he had to reattach, not the removal. He had the reattachment. He had the reattachment. Yeah. It would have been a little this bit is the quicker. Second one on that knee. Yeah, he's had it reattached the twice. One on that knee, which yeah. says something because, like, you think if a meniscus tears, right? So at that point, there has to be part of it that can't be reattached, it. right? Yeah. So it, that that ligament is getting smaller. You're you're reattaching less and less every time. Yeah. Um, but at least it doesn't seem like it's the meniscus now. It's just the bone bruise. But you would have to think if he runs into a meniscus injury again, they're probably just going to remove it at that point. Well, and you also got to think like the bone bruise can cause another meniscus tear. If it, the bone bruise is just yeah. essentially bone on bone yeah. rubbing together at this point. If it's rubbing together against his meniscus, right? I, I would think that that could. Now I'm not a doctor. Listen, I don't know. I'm not medical. But based on what I've seen, that could cause him to have another knee injury. Yeah, it could lead to him having the major surgery that's going to keep yeah. him out for a long time. So there's a lot of concern there, dog. Like it's it's not like this is something that we can brush over because again, like I'll I'll say it again, like this was supposed to be a six week injury. We're now on week what nineteen. Yeah, but I mean, we're in week 16 since he actually had the surgery. Keep in mind that six right. weeks was, was like after three, he had it was the like surgery. Three weeks, and yeah. So he had the surgery back. January 28th is when he officially had the surgery. So we're about 16 uh, weeks removed from that. That's still 10 weeks too long at this point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> at least eight. You know what I'm yeah, saying? At least at least, eight. At least yeah. eight weeks too long at this point. This was supposed to be a surgery that brought him back during the season, and yeah. we didn't see him again. So it, it, it's. It's very concerning, uh, and, and to me, right, it, it sets the offseason in a completely different re- direction than you were expecting to go, than you were expecting to spend money in, because we were talking shooters and big men. Yeah. We weren't talking about, hey, we need, might need a point guard with high IQ that understands Billy Donovan's system. Yeah. So it's it's going to be scary to, 
I'm not gonna lie. the The worst thing is that like we really didn't hear nothing today. It was just like <laughs> they're concerned. So are we. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. And it's also I mean, that even you heard in their in in AK's end of game press conference. I had to go back and listen to it because or end of season press conference. I said I had to go back and listen to it because people were talking about it today. The Bulls didn't know what was wrong with Lonzo. Yeah. Like it got to a point where he's like, we we don't know what's happening either. We're trying to figure it out. We're gonna talk with doctors. It's always a con- AK literally said it's a concern, and we don't know. Yeah. <laughs> like those are those are two things that don't bode well for like, hey, what's wrong with our starting point guard that we just paid eighty million dollars? Yeah, yeah. Ah, ah, hey man, it's it's definitely scary, but uh. Next up, we're going to get into I.O., something more positive, right? Let's get it. We're going to talk about I.O. season, but before we do that, I got to talk to you guys about Prize Picks. So are you looking for a daily fantasy option for the NBA that you need to try the award-winning app Prize Picks? Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. We know you guys are going to love it. It's easy to use. You pick two to five players and an over-under on their projections, and you can win up to 10 times on any injury, any entries, just you versus the projected numbers. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's just that easy. Prize Picks is safe and offers fast withdrawals. Use the award-winning app on both the App Store and Google Play. Now, one of the things that are that's special about Prize Picks is that it does allow for mixed sport, uh, sports entries. And Prize Pick doesn't just offer the NBA. They have options for college, college basketball, college football, NFL, MLB, soccer, MMA, and more. For a limited time, Prize Picks has an exclusive no-burner offer for all of our users. Users get fifty dollars free if a player in your first Prize Picks entry scores a single point, but you must use the code NBA. That's right. It's an exclusive offer available to Locked On fans. Sign up today and use the code NBA for fifty. $50 free if a player in your first prize pick entry scores a single point. Now, unfortunately, I'm not done. Still got to talk to you guys about Built Bar, right? Because <laughs> I'm built for this. We got to talk about Built Bar. Um, imagine dipping your finger into that plastic tub of birthday cake frosting and then opening your eyes and realizing it was only 150 ga- calories and 16 grams of protein. That's what it's like to eat the birthday puffs from Built Bar. I received my uh, birthday cake puffs, unlike Pat. You know, just a little dig at Pat the designer. Uh, I, don't uh, <laughs> I don't host this show. I'm just, I'm just a guy. <laughs> and I've never had anything like it before. They're available right now. And we can't promise that that there will be any tomorrow. So go get them today at built.com. And if you haven't tried the puffs, I'll let you in on a little secret. Because that's what friends do. A chocolate-covered marshmallow protein bar. Yeah, you heard me. Delicious flavored mar- uh, marshmallow covered in 100% real chocolate. Make every day your birthday with Built's built, uh, birthday cake puffs. Built has taken delicious experience in, of biting into a fresh slice of birthday cake and rolled it in 100% white chocolate and added sprinkles. With 150 calories, 16 grams of protein, and only 9 grams of sugar, this limited-time flavor is an amazing option if you're looking for a healthy way to get flavor and variety into your day. All built bar, all built bar puffs are covered in 100% real chocolate. That means that with built, you can eat healthy and actually enjoy it. And they're made with collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides tons of health benefits. Go to built.com to get your birthday cakes puff, birthday cake puffs now. And when you go to built.com, use the promo code LOCK15 and get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off your order at built.com. All right. Pat, we got to talk about a special player that, that means a lot to the to Chicago fans' hearts, and that's Io DeSumo. Hometown kid, drafted in the second round with the 38th overall pick. You guys have all heard the story so far. Earned his minutes to start the season with his defense and just continually built on top of his game every month after that point for the most part until we got to towards the end of the season where he did hit a bit of a rookie wall. And I know there's been some questions of people asking if it was actually a rookie wall. Listen, just to put that in perspective, Ayo Desumu played more games in this season than what he did in over a season and a half in college basketball. Yeah. That's a lot of games. So and yeah, through COVID during college basketball. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and, and, and so there was a lot of a lot of a lot of uh games that Ayo played. So he absolutely hit a rookie wall. But overall, Pat, what are some of the things that Ayo did for you this season that stood out to you? How you how you feel about the season overall? Um, I mean, listen, he's a second round pick. You got to say a season was an A. Uh, mm-hmm. Are there some things that I can improve upon? Of course, he's a rookie. Uh, I would hope that like if he came out and we were like, nope, he's great. He's going to be amazing. Let's keep it going. We yeah. we would be over the moon. But there are things that I needs to work on here. 
But when I look at his game overall, listen, Io DeSumo showed that he can be a scorer in this NBA. Um, more so in flashes because it wasn't really what we were asking him to do. Most mm-hmm. of the times he came in playing the point guard position. He had to facilitate the ball, which it showed that he has an ability to do. Uh, I think he learned a lot this season. I think there were moments this season, there were definitely games this season where he cost us the game. Uh, and and I think he learned from those moments because we saw the very next game. I think the biggest thing about Iowa was how quickly he learned, right? Like a sponge, man. It was it was immediate. They, I, I I go back to the second. It might have been the game winner. It's either the game winner or the second time. No, it was the game winner uh, versus Washington. He has a play, right side of the court, catches the ball, jab steps, and then goes to make the move and ends up kicking it out. And you see kind of Bradley Beal talking to him on the mm-hmm. sidelines uh, as they're walking up the court. And in the post, he says, Bradley Beal told me, don't think about making the move. Just make the move. You've made it a million times and go. And immediately, the next play down he makes his move immediately. Pull up, Jay Cash, and Brad Bill says, "I didn't tell you to do it to me." <laughs> that was, but that was Io's season to me. It was immediate. Yeah. I, the rest of the season, I focused in on him making that same move offensively, and that's how, like defensively, I felt like he did some really good things this season. I feel like that's how, he, of course, that's how he got his minutes on the court. Mm-hmm. Uh, his defense, I would give an A. Um, and, and it's because of where he is, right? Like, yeah, he did get cooked by Drew Holiday and some other point guards in the NBA. He's a rookie and he's the <laughs> second round pick. Like, yeah. I feel like there were moments where we were like, he's got to be better. There isn't better here. He's, he's just gotten the NBA like 30 games ago. I swear. <laughs> so, uh, I, I loved his defense. I think the offensive game, I'd probably give a C and I think it'll be improving. Uh, but we just didn't see it consistent enough. Yeah. Um, but defense, I, I'd give him an A. I mean, he shut down some big name point guards in this league. All till we talk about him hitting that rookie wall. Yeah, I mean, he did, and you know, yeah, he got cooked a couple of times. But every, almost every great defender, right? Somebody who turned, and I, I think Io has the ability to turn into a great defender in the NBA. Um, good size. Yeah, they they get cooked sometimes there, especially early in their careers. Oh yeah. Um, so, you know, when you look at Io size, 6'4", 200 pounds, he's easily going to put on probably about five to eight pounds of muscle uh, over the course of his NBA career. A long 6'4", uh, too. I think he has a... I think he has a six six wingspan, I believe. So he's going to have it's, more. It's than, huge, yeah. Let me yeah, see. more than more than enough enough uh, size to guard players in the NBA. He, yeah. l- listen, as things come along for Io, six eight wingspan for six, Io. To sumo. Six eight <laughs> wingspan. That is crazy. <laughs> at being six four. Um, listen, Io's Io's ceiling is through the roof. Um, but one of the things that we do want to talk about here um, is where Io would be drafted in the redraft if they were if they were to redraft i'm just gonna go first here um and then i'll throw it to pat i say io doesn't get lower than 15 to washington i say washington looks at especially if they plan on keeping bradley bill look at io and say hey that's a point guard we can invest in and develop i think he may go higher than that i think that there's a chance small chance that he may go 13th to indiana instead yeah. of chris duarte but I would say that he doesn't drop lower than 15th to Washington. What do you think? Uh, I'd be in agreement with you on that. Uh, I mean, when you look at it, you're talking about every other team in there has a point guard. Mm-hmm. Um, Sacramento, Orlando has like 17 of them. Mm-hmm. Golden State, OKC, they drafted Josh Giddy, which was a weird one to me. But, I mean, Josh Giddy's a really good player. But I mm-hmm. don't know how him and Shea are going to work together. We'll see. Um I would probably agree with you. Um, Corey Kispert, a pretty good shooter. I'm not going to act like I followed them closely, (laughs) but I know. See, it's tough, right? Because you can't gauge stuff based on what they did versus us. Because I know he shot well versus us. <clears throat> but so did every other role player in the NBA. <laughs> like <laughs> this, is, this is true. This so is true. I'm like, I, I I don't know how well he actually played this season as a rookie. Um, the only other team I could see him possibly getting to is maybe the Knicks. But are they looking point guard this early there? Rockets wouldn't need one. You know, the other team that would be interesting that I thought might be might be a move on him if like we're talking about him still falling in the draft. <clears throat> 
Because, I mean, the, the, the hype on him wasn't high. Like, mm -hmm. there's a reason he went in the second round. The hype on him wasn't high. You weren't looking at him as a, um, a, a lottery pick at any point, right? And it's because of how things went at Illinois, even though he did play well. It's just because of how things went at Illinois. Um, but I thought Denver would be a good move. And at a minimum, w w here's, here's the question, right? Maybe we, we should say this. I'll say this going into the next segment. Okay. Who's the team that's the biggest crime for passing on Io DeSumo? Oh, let's yeah, we'll, let's get let's into say that, that for the next segment, man. Yeah. We gonna say that for the next segment. Yeah. I feel like that's a juicy one, right? Oh, there. wait, grades. What grade are we giving Io? I'm ah, giving him solid. I, I'm giving him solid B minus as a second round pick. He got to get a B minus. I said, I said I'd give him a what I give him. I don't yeah. know how grades really work out. I gave him a a, a, a on defense. Mm -hmm. Gave him a C on offense. What's that? It's like a it's like a a a B minus, yeah. right? Like B, yeah. B minus, something like that. I think, I think he listen based on where he was drafted, he clearly overperformed. Clearly. Um, hey, I I, I don't take this at your word, Bulls fans. Or take this, take this with a grain of salt, but go look at Jokic's first year numbers to his second year numbers. All I'm saying, yeah. all I'm I'm not saying nothing. They're not ready. They're not ready, I'm Pat. Not go ahead and move nothing. on. They're not ready. They're not ready. Just go ahead. But and move AK's on. got a thing with these second round picks. Make a bet on it. By the way, uh, we want to tell you guys about Bet Online. Man, we want to thank Bet Online for being the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find out the latest odds, news, and sports development, including this year's NBA playoffs, MLB scores, fights, and even next season's NFL futures, which people losing their minds over the Bears already. <laughs> but I tell you that right now. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today and use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet online where the game starts. All right. Next up, Pat just said it. We're going to talk about what teams are kicking themselves the most for passing on Io to Sumu. Now, second round pick. Teams may just be like, hey, listen, man, we missed out on that. Uh, but there are some teams that probably should be kicking themselves for, for not picking up Io to Sumu. And one of the ones that I'm going to go to with that is I think one of the teams that I talked about it. Considering everything that happened, I think the Indiana Pacers are probably kicking themselves the most. Not just because they drafted Chris Duarte, but because of the trade that they ended up making. Could you imagine a backcourt? Uh, uh, for what? Did, again, they have to develop. True, but of yeah. Tyrese Halliburton and Io DeSumo. I, I mean, listen, are you even trading for <clears throat> Tyrese Halliburton if... I oh, think well, so, because no. Halliburton can play the two. I mean, yeah, but Io Sabonis and like a pick and roll with oh. Io Sabonis. Well, I think that they were going to move on from Sabonis or Turner anyway, just because that they didn't want to keep that cash strap or that money. Yeah. So I think that they would have probably made a move anyway. And it's not like Io would have done enough to like turn them into a winner this season. So I think they probably would have made that move anyway. Um but at that point, I, I, I don't get it yet anyway. That's all. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I, I have. I have no <laughs> we idea. Gotta, we gotta start this thing all over. Yeah. You have. A, you have a player that could be a generational player. <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sac Sacramento is a weird place. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> having <laughs> having a core going forward. If they still make that trade, you know, and I, and I understand there's some Not conversation bad, yeah. of what they've made, but having you still got Malcolm Brogdon there to still kind of be maybe that mentor for IO his first couple of years, but you at least have a core to build off of at that point. IO, Halliburton, Turner, if you decide to keep him, but even if you don't, just having your backcourt kind of locked in, yeah, that changes some things for 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 that team. All right, what about you? I I, I would agree. I think that. The interesting thing there is like Io kind of still would have had the same opportunity there mm -hmm. because of all the injuries that have come from like, I mean, uh, uh, who else? What uh, what's his name was there too? Um, why can't I think of buddy name now? He's in Cleveland now. Did nothing for him. Who? Two guard. Oh 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 Levert. Levert. Karis Levert. Yes. Okay, you, you had Karis Levert on that team <clears throat> as well. And but all of them had injury issues. So Io would have had many of the same opportunities he had here. You probably see him develop very similarly 
Mm-hmm. Um, the team for me that the big is the biggest crime on passing on Io DeSumo um uh, started off the second round. And um now let me see. They, they might just, I, I no, well, it is Washington. It is Washington. I was gonna say Milwaukee, but I, I see now that they traded the pick. Yeah. Uh uh, it was traded to Washington. Um that's an interesting one then. I, Milwaukee was for me because I felt like their backcourt depth was a serious issue this year, clearly, because as Chris Middleton goes down, right, like, <laughs> mm-hmm. they ran out of options there. Uh, okay, let's go up a little bit. Let's go up a little bit. Hey, we're doing it on the fly right now. I would say also look at Denver at 26 since they did draft a point guard. That's Had the- AK still been in Denver, yeah. you do, you know Iowa would have been the pick there. You probably would have took Iowa. You know <laughs> Iowa would have been the pick there. <laughs> no, I, I – Absolutely. I think uh I think that's a huge one. I'll I'll give you another one. Um having a point guard that I would say is consistently there as a backup for Reggie Jackson, the Clippers could have mm. absolutely utilized IO Sumo's skill. Yeah. Um, and he would have got a ton of run this season because there were injuries all over the board. And I, yeah. I feel like that would have been a good fit for him. And that defense would have been ridiculous for years to come. And mm-hmm. Iowa with a six, eight wingspan, Paul George has got almost a seven foot wingspan. I believe, uh, uh, Kawhi Leonard has over a seven foot wingspan just based on the hands. I feel like the Clippers would have been a probably That's probably the team that I would say might be kicking themselves the most outside of the paint. Not, not that you look at it, right? Like the Pacers is a really good one. I don't really think there's another team on here. That's like point guard strapped. The NBA is kind of point guard heavy again. Yeah. Um, maybe here's, here's the only other thing I could think, right? Like at 20, would you have rather seen Atlanta take IO? And you have a one and two <clears throat> where Trey either plays the one or plays what probably should be his position of a very small two guard. Trey, or, oh, Trey will get cooked at the two, bro. Or, or Io plays the two, which is technically what he was drafted mm-hmm. as. And he was a scorer in college. I I don't like the Atlanta fit. I think there, there are some other fits. But I would say this, even if they don't try to play them together, having a solid backup. Yeah, yeah. Is underrated in the NBA as well. Look at what some of the backup point guards have done just in these playoffs so far. Um, so yeah, I, I can see that. I I, I still think, I think hey, we Indiana, missed the obvious one. We missed the what's obvious. that <laughs> Phoenix. <laughs> Where did Phoenix twenty nine? Phoenix at twenty nine. Oh, it was oh. traded. To, it was traded. Well, it was to, traded to Brooklyn. It was traded. Yeah, to it was Brooklyn. traded. Never to mind. Never mind. So. They got. I got. I'm on NBA.com, so they got the original teams, and then they say okay. over in the corner traded to. But <laughs> I was gonna. I was gonna say Phoenix is the obvious one. Dog, listen, yeah. listen. All that. All that hype around uh, campaign over there. Dog, like listen. the numbers came crashing Can- down. Didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> campaign still had put up had some solid games, but yeah, they definitely came crashing down. Uh, you know, Bulls. <laughs> fans were like hey we should have kept camp there's no way that oh we should have kept campaign god, god I, I hate said, that i said i said there was two things one campaign was really bad here mm-hmm. i watched them i watched them miss mid-range shots somebody professional was like he was probably working on something and i was like missing there's no, <laughs> you don't work on missing dog like you try not to do that yeah but he left and came back and fixed his game both things can be true I this credit him for that, but God, I'm glad he wasn't here no more. This is true. This is true. <laughs> now, another team, considering the way things shook out, Houston with three first round picks. Now, they drafted all power forwards. Oh, they drafted one shooting guard and Josh Carter Josh as well. Yeah. yeah, uh, Christopher. What did I say? Carter? Josh, uh, Christopher. Josh Carter. I don't know who um, that is. Yeah, well, I don't know who that is. He. Um, but, uh, Dude, are they cooking themselves? Because they could have had a steal in IO. You have three first round picks, and I tell you what. Out of the three first round picks that they drafted, some of them look okay, but I think I would I would rate Iowa's potential uh, over all of them right now. Jalen Green's pretty good. Um, I, I well, I'm not talking about Jalen Green. I'm talking about their after, they had the 16th, yeah, yeah. 23rd, and 24th. We're not talking about Jalen. Jalen gets left off there. Yeah, Jalen Green. We're not going to rate Iowa above him. But I'm talking yeah. about the three in the lower part of the first round that they had. I mean. <clears throat> I get 
I, I guess it would probably fit their mold a little bit. I don't know if they're kicking themselves, but it would fit what they've done, right? Because you got you to gotta think about, they legitimately right now have three really good point guards on their team. This is true. And they don't play two of them. Mm-hmm. John Wall's still on that team. <laughs> Dennis Schroeder is on that team. Damn, Dennis Neither. Schroeder is on, the, is on the Rockets? Dennis Schroeder got traded to the Rockets <laughs> mid-season. Oh, no, he, he might have been a part of the buyout. Pro- I don't remember. I, he either got traded. No, he did get traded. Cause, yeah, he's still on uh, the death he chart. He got traded for Daniel Tice. That's crazy. He got traded for Daniel Tice. That's how Daniel Tice got back to Boston. Like, <clears throat> And you got, I mean, you got Jalen Green. Jalen Green's the two tech. Not really. Like, I I guess, like, yeah, I could see Houston probably being upset that, like, man, we could have got that guy. But mm-hmm. also, like, where you're going to play him like he fits your mold, but I don't know. They're weird. They got a, they got a standing. Now they want Russell Westbrook back. They're going to, Hey, listen, I don't, Houston, I don't know. <laughs> Houston is either going to make a great trade to make their roster make sense. Or they're going to make a trade to make their roster make less sense than what it does right now. Uh, the, the latest rumor is they've got a standing trade offer for Russell Westbrook for John wall, but Lakers have to send back picks. Listen, is that okay? Here's the, here's the thing. Honestly, honestly, hey, and you hey, tell me if I'm tripping. Just is trading play John. It's it's trading John Wall versus Russell Westbrook. It's like that Spider Man meme. Are they just pointing at each other like, hey, <laughs> hey, hey, like, <laughs> hey, bro? I and and this is the sad part, right? They're probably gonna play Russ. Russ is gonna be able to play again. He's not standing next to LeBron. John Wall's gonna get over there. John Wall's gonna look bad. It's I don't know, dog. I don't know. The, the, the Rockets are dumb. Uh, <laughs> that's all I can say about it. The Rockets are dumb. Uh, but no, nah, man, I, I don't feel like the Rockets will be kicking themselves. Um, I feel like the the team that's probably I, I think we named probably the teams that probably I feel like would be kicking themselves the most, right? Like Philly feels good with Maxi. Yeah. Brooklyn's this- got maybe Brooklyn. Maybe, maybe that's the one we're missing. Do, do you think Brooklyn maybe? I think Brooklyn, when you look at the fact that of their 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 have no cap flexibility, right? So they can only improve basically in the draft and with exceptions, they probably are kicking themselves because I was a hell of a talent to add to what the what they have there. And yeah. you know, yeah, he's gonna be playing behind Kyrie. Hell, he may have been starting part of the season with uh with Kyrie most out. of the season, probably. Yeah, but um he's probably playing behind Kyrie, all things even, but he would get to absorb so much. Again, as one of the things that you that you we as we know with Io is that he needed a mentor, right? Demar taking him under his wing helped his confidence so much. And you would have to think that KD, even though he doesn't brush his hair or use lotion, he would he would probably have seen the talent that Io had and say, Hey man, this this kid can really help us go a little yeah. bit. Yeah. I, I so. think I think I think that's probably the one to me. I mean. They drafted Cameron Thomas at 27. Eh. Um, is that the only pick they had, or did they get two shot there? That was the only shot they had at him. I, I feel like oh, no. I, they drafted 27th and 29th. 20. Oh, yeah. 29th is is uh uh Deron Sharp. Listen, uh once they start putting apostrophes in names, I guess. Dayron, Dayron Sharp. Dayron uh, Sharp. That's what they say to me. D-A-Y apostrophe Ron Sharp. <laughs> Listen, uh, and we black. So like if we look at the name, like what the heck is that? Uh his mama named him Dayron. I'm gonna call him Dayron. Uh <laughs> maybe, right? Like I need he didn't really get as a ton of run. He got a little bit of run. Yeah. Um, uh, but Claxton got most of the run there for them. So yeah, I feel like that's probably the obvious one that we were missing because, to me, one, you miss Kyrie for most of the season. Two, you might not have Kyrie next year based on how Brooklyn is talking. And you mm-hmm. could have a point guard in your system that's been there a year that's played with KD that knows a little bit what the heck he's doing going into next <clears throat> season. But then the thing is, is that when when Brooklyn made that trade with F- Philly, would Philly have demanded IOB added in there? No, because they didn't demand anything. They, this they is gave, true. They gave they up like, more. They were like, hey, no. right. it, like, it was like, like hey, we got hard and we're good. Bro, yeah. I felt like it was a Ryan Pace trade. Like, he was <laughs> on the phone arguing with himself. Like, yeah. hey, do you want the, uh, uh, we want the second pick in the draft. We'll offer you a draft pick. Uh, no, nope, nope. Hold on. Before you say anything, we'll offer you three draft picks. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
didn't say nothing yet. And a player. I, I haven't said nothing yet. Oh, man. Take my that's... money. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> oh, man. That's crazy. But, hey, at the end of the day, so after going depressing. through. <laughs> after going through. Oh, listen. It's bro, you see so how quick weird. I changed the subject? Because bringing up Ryan Pace <laughs> is trauma. You feel me? That's trauma for me. You bring up the names of Ryan Pace and or Matt Nagy, like my brain literally Ooh. goes into a place that I don't know if I can come back from. Uh, I've so just I'm just now got to the point where I can say polls on a consistent <laughs> basis and not mix it up, dog. That's how traumatic it was. But a- after all that, talking about the redraft, talking about who's kicking themselves, at the end of the day, I'm happy he's here. I and we know, it. like, the, the the Bulls have a decision to make at the at next offseason, which how much they're going to extend them. But I don't really have any concerns with I, and I hope that this doesn't come back to bite me, but I have no concerns with Io returning to this team. He's a Chicago kid. This team invested in him. He has a chip on his shoulder. He knows what it means to play in the city of Chicago. And I think that AK and Eversley are going to understand what they have in him and offer him a considerable extension. Before we get out of here, is he enough of a safety blanket for you to continue focusing on what you wanted to go into the offseason, focusing on if Io's hurt or if uh, Alonzo's hurt? <laughs> I would say that depending on Io's development, and they'll know, right? They'll, they'll have conversations. They'll kind of know looking at him and what they expect, that he's enough of a safety net to where you still need to add another guard, but maybe you don't have to go after the the Tyrus uh, Jones. You don't have to go after the the Schroeders. You don't have to go after the, the bigger names. You just have to fill in a, another competent guard who can do some things for you. But they may look at it as enough of a safety net to say, hey, we rolling with Io. Not because we don't believe in Lonzo, but hey, if Lonzo's down and out, that's our that's our guy. Yeah. So. It's gonna be interesting to see, man. It's gonna be yeah. interesting to see. Definitely. But go ahead. It's a much better episode. Let's die yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> talking about bums talk off about the Tony beach. Bradley. <laughs> <laughs> hey, follow well, me on everything at Pat the Designer, man. At P-A-T-T-H-E D-E-S-I-G-N-E-R. Yes, I did go to public school, but they taught me how to spell. Also, follow us on everything at Locked On Bulls. And you can follow me at CEO Hayes at CEO H A I Z E. Thank you so much for joining us and tuning into Locked On Bulls and making us your first listen of the day. Now for your second listen, go and listen to Locked On NBA. We're the we're the uh, Locked On experts taking you deep inside the playoffs with insight and analysis affecting all thirty teams. You can even catch our very own Pat the Designer over there once a week. But make sure you go and check them out. They're available wherever podcasts are. But that's it from us for today. We love you guys, man. We going out. We will see you, lovely and beautiful people, tomorrow. Yeah, stay safe out there, man. Peace. All right.